I tried to relate to the student's goals as a specific practitioner. He was interested in paediatrics, so I gave him a calculations example with a paediatric patient to contrast it with that of an adult patient. I showed him a bit of what would be coming and how he would be able to apply it in practice. Both of these examples are reasonable explanations of how you would teach, but don't require that you have had formal teaching experience. Number 19. How will you fit teaching in? You'll be busy. This is a question about prioritizing and organizing. Obviously, you're going to be extraordinarily busy as a resident. You'll probably precept students, especially if you're getting a teaching certificate, and you'll want to be prepared. Here's how you might answer the question even if you've never taught. I'll start with the expression that if you lose an hour in the morning, you look for it all day. I want to tell a quick story about a resident who always made sure she didn't lose that hour. I appreciated the residents who took the time to teach me. I know how busy residents are just from my own rotation so far. I had one particular resident who's become a mentor to me. She went through what she was assigned to do, but also shared additional background literature in this Amcare clinic. I felt so much more prepared to meet with patients as I started to understand why we would take a particular approach. I want to mentor as she did. I mean, I mean, yes, it requires more work, but her method was to come to work a little early, not always an actual hour, to set up a teaching system so she didn't reinvent the wheel. She said it took a lot of time at first, but with that system, it made it possible for her to teach more, much faster. What I think worked as well is that when, as students, we saw how much energy they were putting in, we reciprocated, trying our best to give back by staying a bit later ourselves. She could have focused on her longitudinal projects, but it was clear she had a calendar for taking care of those a little at a time. I learned and appreciated not only the content I learned, but how she prioritized and organized her activities. And we'll finish up with number 20. What qualities does your model preceptor have? This is a good question because it's self-reflective. Answering it well shows you've thought about it. It's a window into what you like and what you don't, similar to a trick question. You don't want your ideal preceptor to hold your hand the entire time. For example, she rounded with me every day and I felt very safe. Or that she kept you accountable rather than you demonstrating your autonomy and self-motivation. She made sure we worked up every single patient together and had every detail before rounds. And she was always on rounds with me. Sometimes the patients would ask me questions, but mostly they would ask her. Even if you did learn a lot by observing, that's not going to be a model preceptor. Also, if it is what you liked, that's not the answer you want to give on your residency interview. Remember, the goal of your residency is to get you to become that model preceptor. The goal is to turn you from a passive to an active practitioner who rounds making his own or her own recommendations. The interviewers want to know they'll be able to take a day off from time to time because they trust you. You can still pay homage to the preceptor who sheltered you, but articulate how you asked to spread your wings slowly. You might have had to ask for autonomy, but you developed into someone who worked on his or her own, and that's what matters. Here's an example. I had an unexpected change in my schedule and landed in an internal medicine rotation. My rotations got shifted several weeks before, and it wasn't due to my institution or me. It just happened, so I rolled with it. I ended up being with a preceptor I didn't know and who didn't really know me, and it turned out he was going to be gone for the fourth rotation week in a five-week block. Luckily, I had several rotations that fed well into this internal medicine one. I had built background skills, had hospital experience in psych, and had a good feel for things. What I appreciated about this preceptor was how he showed me his process for working up patients. He introduced me to the computer system, the nurses, the attending, medical residents, and medical students. I really felt oriented, for lack of a better word. He showed me where I could work so I could hang out on the unit and made me feel like part of the family. He did it all during the first week. Every week he met with me to check on things we could improve and to discuss how we would apply them the next week. This feedback was phenomenal. What I enjoyed the most was that he let me round by myself when he was gone the fourth week. He put the unit in my care. Obviously he had a pharmacist following up, so I had someone with whom I could ask questions and who was a resource. I worked on my patients and rounded with them, so I had autonomy. My preceptor trusted me enough to allow it, and it became the first experience where I honestly felt like a pharmacist. I want to recreate that for my students. That was really special for me.